All right, so what are we doing here today? I feel like we've told people before how we met, but some people just don't know. So we thought we would take it back to the way beginning of our relationship and just explain how we got to where we are today. Today, we are telling the world the story of how me and Ayla got together. Started dating. That would have been cool for a dramatic effect. The, tell the story of how we started dating. How did you and Ayla meet? Okay, it's a very short story, but I'm gonna make it long. Usually it's long story short, but this is a short story long. We met on Raya. Yeah, we met on a dating app called Raya. It was the first time I've ever been on a dating app in my life. <laughs> and Ayla and I are very, very embarrassed to admit that we met on a dating app, but we did. It was the first time I've ever been on a dating app in my life. <laughs> and Kian was the first date I ever went on and the last. Do you remember his profile? And did anything like stick out to you? Like, this is why I swipe right. So there was a picture on her profile. I think she's gonna hate me if I get this wrong. Maybe it was on her Instagram, but there was a very specific picture of her sitting on a counter with a tub of ice cream. And just like her skin looked really nice. She was like really tanned and she was super personable that she was like eating ice cream. I was like, I like eating ice cream too. He had a dog in his pictures. And I was like, oh, he loves dogs, that's so cute. It's funny because I wasn't really like someone who was into tattoos, but I saw his tattoos and I was like, those are kind of cool. He said hi to me first, but then I instantly had to say something about the dog pic. And she was just really hot. She was very, very, very hot. She still is. So what was his pick alone? Was it like just hi? Just hey. I think it was just hey. Honestly, I wish I could go back and look, but he wasn't really someone that would like send a crazy text. He's very just like, Hey. My opening line, I think I hit her with the hey, but what I can tell you right now is as we started dating for a long time, she told me that she has never reached out to someone first. She always waits for the guy to reach out to her and she has only reached out to one guy ever in the world. And to this day, I don't know who that is because I know I would get very jealous. But I reached out to her and the rest is history. So how did it lead to like the first date? We talked for a little bit, but it was really sporadic. And I remember not wanting to be on the dating app anymore. So I sent him one last message and I was like, hey, I'm getting off this thing. If you ever want to text me, here's my number. And then I deleted the app. I didn't know if he'd read it or not, or if he saw it. And I think like a week and a half went by and I got a text from a random number and I didn't respond because I didn't know who it was. And then I got a text three or five days later <laughs> And he says, it's Kian. And I'm like, oh, nice. Cause again, he texts me just saying, hey, yeah. <laughs> no, no, like it's Kian, what's up? And then it took us probably two weeks after that to finally meet. The first date was something special. I remember picking her up in my car. Uh, and what I distinctly, vividly remember is her walking out of her door and me thinking she is shorter in person. When she opened the car door to get into my car, she didn't even have to sit. She was standing in the front seat of my car and her head still wasn't even touching the top of the top of the car. I remember seeing him in his car. I remember he was wearing a red sweater that was like half on, half off. That was like his thing back in the day. I remember seeing him in the car and I went into my kitchen. And I, I don't know if he knows this, but I took two chugs of wine. <laughs> Like, like two little sips of wine. Chugs or sips? It was sips, not chugs, because I could get, I, <laughs> yeah, it was two sips of wine because I was so nervous. He had told me that he would have a joke prepared for me when he saw me. That was like the first thing I asked him. I was like, so what's your joke? Do you remember the joke? No, I don't think he had one. <laughs> he was too nervous. <laughs> yeah. I ended up taking her to Starbucks because she told me she had coffee. We went to Starbucks, a super low key spot here in Los Angeles. So I remember taking her to one of my favorite spots in LA. It's a lookout, it's on Mulholland, and it's close to another lookout. And I wanted to go to both. And I remember asking her if we should drive to the other location because I always tended to drive to the other location. She told me that she wanted to walk, which meant a lot to me because that meant she wasn't lazy. She's always down for an adventure. We had to walk through dirt and bush and like, it was a little adventure and that told me a lot about her. We just like instantly connected. I, it didn't take us long at all to just start talking. We never had a moment where it was quiet. We always had something to talk about. I remember when we first got out of the car, when we went to Starbucks before the hill, he saw me and he's like, whoa, you're a lot shorter than I thought you were. Cause I think he was just basing it off my profile pictures, but we wound up going to an arts and craft store and getting cardboard things to paint on. And we went in front of his house and painted on his driveway. I painted, a banana and she painted, oh God, what did she paint? She was painting, she, I remember she tried to write out chicken and I finished the word, oh, what did she paint? I painted a banana. Can I look at my phone? 
No, it's cheating, dude. What? Put your phone down. I can't. Ooh. Okay. I distinctly and vividly remember she painted a banana and I painted cherries. And on the very top, she was gonna write out the word chicken. I don't know what her obsession with chickens are, but she calls uh, our dog chicken. She calls people who she loves chicken. Uh, she got to the CH and she said she had to leave. So what I did is I took it upon myself to finish her painting. I wrote out, I finished out chicken next to that word, I drew a little red heart and I put a W next to it. And this is the first time I ever met this girl. Kian told me you had to leave early. I did. What was that about? I made it up. You made it up? <laughs> I didn't have to leave. I made it up because I always get really nervous meeting someone some, for the first time and I really wanted to hang out with Kian, but I also was just, I knew I needed to have something else to do to seem, you know, busy. So I, I told him, I was like, oh, I have a photo shoot I have to go to. I actually remember him texting me a picture of my painting later that night and he had finished it for me. Uh, later that night, she texted me saying, can you send me the, the pictures that we painted? And I was like, I drew a heart next to it with her initials. What if she thinks I'm crazy? One of the things that I knew I really liked him after this was because I used to call everyone chicken. I was writing chill at the end of my photo and I wrote C-H-I and I couldn't finish it. And he finished it by writing chicken with like a red heart. And I remember showing my roommate and I was like, oh my God, he's the one. This is so good. He's a really good painter. Yeah, I was supposed to say chill because we were copying pictures off his water bottle and he had a sticker that said chill but he finished it to say chicken, and then he wrote my name with a heart. Did you try giving her a first date kiss or anything? Oh no. It's hard to explain. It's one of those instances where you want to kiss this person, but you don't know them well enough. Like you, it's not the second date, it's not the third date. I wanted to, but I felt like it was the wrong time. And I knew I wanted to save it because she was special and it just wasn't the right place, wasn't the right time. And she also left early. So I felt like it wasn't one of those things where I was like, oh, I had a really good night with you. It was one of those things where like, hey, I gotta go. I'm not gonna be like, okay, before you go, can I have a kiss? No, uh, no first date kiss. I don't ever like kissing someone on the first date, so it wasn't that I didn't want to kiss him because I probably wanted to kiss him the second I saw him. Yeah, I was pretty happy leaving it the way it was. So my first impression of her when she left was one of those things where you close the door after they leave and you turn your back on the door and you like kind of fall to the ground. That was my reaction. She uh, she blew me away. Although I thought I kind of ruined the date because she left early. I knew, I knew she was the one since the very beginning. I knew I wanted to see her again. I knew I wanted to take things slow. I knew with Ayla it was something special. I knew it was something different. I was just so infatuated by him. <laughs> Sounds so silly to say now. I just couldn't stop talking about him to my roommate. I had a guard up because I just know how boys are in LA. So I thought he was cute. I had a great time. He was funny, but I still was a little just standoffish, just in case. When did you fall in love? The day I knew I fell in love with Ayla, I think is very special and it's very unique and it's very one of a kind. It's not some lovey-dovey story, but it is, uh, it's very special to me. Started off all great. <laughs> we go to this 4th of July party. I, I got a little drunk <laughs> and I think he for sure got drunk too. I went with my friends, she went with her friends. I ended up seeing her holding hands with this guy. In my head, I was like, why would she invite me to something that she didn't want me to be a part of or she was already with somebody else or What's going on here? I ended up just taking it upon myself to enjoy 4th of July. I got somewhat intoxicated. Others might say very intoxicated. And when I'm drunk, I love talking to people. So I just go off and I just start talking with all these people and I'm, I'm a huge extrovert. So like I just get really social. And I think he didn't really like that at the time because he wanted to be by me the whole time. I don't really know what happened in the middle, but I was with my friends at McDonald's. But I kept calling him to tell him to come over to McDonald's to meet me there. When he crossed the street, he was holding hands with this girl. And I remember thinking to myself, <laughs> that's it, we're done. Like, I'm sure he's found someone else. I don't know, I was dramatic. I was just thinking, like, I was pretty sad. It was becoming towards the end of the night and she was leaving in a party bus and I felt like I was still with my friends, but I was there to see her. So she was leaving in a party bus with her friends and I felt stranded. I felt like betrayed and I felt I felt very sad because I, I felt like she was leaving me. And I was with my, my friend and she's like, just come in the bus with us, like don't even worry about it. And I was like, no, I feel like I should stay and talk to him. And, she's, and I was like, why don't you go get him? And I think she tried to go get him and he wanted to stay or something, I don't really know, but I wound up leaving. It's funny that you told me he was holding some girl's hand because he told me you were holding someone else's hand. No, I wasn't! 
That's what he said. Whose hand? I can tell you exactly the girl he was holding, but I don't remember holding some guy's hand. Oh, I was holding some guy's hand. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I was. It was my old manager. I used to work at Nobu, and my old manager came to get us, and he grabbed my hand to pull me through the crowd. So I grabbed his hand, and he didn't like that I grabbed his hand to go through the crowd. I just think we both did something that day where it was a miscommunication. He didn't like me holding someone's hand, and then I didn't like his holding someone's hand. Mm -hmm. Found out later, it was just like a girl that he's like really good friends with, mm -hmm. and she was helping him cross the road. Yeah. No harm done, but wow, now I do remember holding someone's hand. Mm -hmm. Oops. <laughs> the night goes on and I'm in an Uber and I'm like freaking out because I, this was the girl I liked and what happened, what did I do, did I ruin it again? All these things are going through my mind. I end up breaking my phone out of frustration with myself. Like I ruined this whole thing. I ruined this whole thing with this amazing, pretty, beautiful, fantastic girl and I've f***ed the whole thing up. So I break my phone out of frustration. This is where the night gets interesting. I use my friend who is in the seat next to me in this Uber. I use my friend's phone to message Ayla's friend. Message to see if she was home or what was going on, to see if she was okay, to see if she made it home safe, all these things. And I found out she was home. I found out she made it home safe and I found out she was going to bed or getting ready to end the night. I guess he had taken her phone and was DMing my friend, I need to see Ayla. Like I need to see her, it's Kian or something like that. And my, I told my friend, I was like, just tell him no, I don't want to see him. I, I just let it go. She kept telling him, she's like, just leave her alone. She's just, she really just would rather not see you. She'll talk to you later. I wasn't really gonna be able to talk to him later because I was leaving the next day for Europe. I was just mm -hmm. kind of like, this is probably it. We're just not gonna make it. So I hop out of this Uber at my friend's house, which is West Hollywood. Ayla at the point lived in Studio City, which is very far. I was still slightly intoxicated at my friend's house and I told my friend, I don't have a phone. I don't have money. I don't have my wallet. I don't know where it went. I'm gonna walk to Ayla's house. I get about a couple miles up the road. I'm missing a shoe at this point. I have no phone, no wallet. I run into a Ralph's, go in this Ralph's, and I ask them to use their phone. They end up letting me use their phone. I call this taxi, I'm like, hey, I have no money. When I get to my destination, I think I'll have money to give you. Can you please just help me out? This taxi ends up coming, gives me a ride. In this taxi, I end up meeting one of like the best guys in the world. I told him my whole story. It was like a story in the movie. I had to meet this girl before she goes to bed. It was kind of like, I have to get to the airport before she takes off on this plane kind of thing. And he was like, I'm gonna get you there and everything's gonna work out. I end up getting to her house, knock on the door. Nobody answers, I go in. I get home and I'm washing my face. It's probably 12.30 at night or 12.30 in the morning at this point. I run upstairs and I see her in the bathroom and she looks at me and I look at her. She was some beautiful girl brushing her teeth with her hair down like, in a big old shirt, just getting ready for bed. Ended up running up to her and just hugging her for like what felt like a lifetime. Um, <sighs> such a weird story, but I, I <sighs> sorry. I knew if I was willing to go through something, like, something like that for somebody that I would want to spend the rest of my life with that somebody. And um, with that weird story being told, that's how I fell in love with Ayla. I think I drunkenly asked her to be my girlfriend that night. So that's technically our anniversary is the 5th of July or the 4th of July is the 4th of July night, but we technically think it was past midnight. So that's how I fell in love with Ayla. What do you think was going on in her head when you showed up? She probably thought someone was breaking into her house, dude. I don't know, I was not, I was not in the right state of mind. I was head over heels for this girl. I knew I had to do anything to like tell her and let her know how I was feeling. And I think at that moment, she didn't want anything to do with me. I just loved it. I was so happy that he didn't listen to me and he came over and saw me because it just showed that he really cared about me. I know it sounds super silly now and probably a little toxic, but it helped that he was drunk because he confessed a lot to me that night which I don't think he would have if he was sober. But yeah, he basically just told me how much he loves me. <laughs> I just had to hear him say it first, but the yeah. second he said it, I probably was smiling just like I am now and I just couldn't stop feeling just like so happy because I wanted to be with him. I didn't want to be with anyone else. He said, the thought of you being with anyone else just makes me sick to my stomach. So I just have to ask you if you'll stay mine. And I was like, yeah. Wasn't there something about that she found your shoe or something? As I was saying, I'm gonna walk to Ayla's house from my friend's house in West Hollywood. My friend was laying on the ground at that point and she grabbed onto my leg. She was like, stay, you, you have to stay, wait till tomorrow. And I was like, 
absolutely not. I'm leaving. She was grabbing onto my leg and I was leaving and my shoe came off and I was like, I don't give a fuck about that shoe. The shoe means nothing. And I walked all the way to Ayla's with, with no shoe. I, whoa, I completely forgot about this whole thing. Should I get it? Yeah, go get it. It's kind of cool. So the night went like this. I was walking out. My friend held onto my shoe, took it off. I kept walking with one shoe, took this to Ayla's house and I was carrying it. She's like, why do you have one shoe? And I was like, Long story, a couple days later, the friend's house that I lost this shoe at, someone gave her the shoe thinking it was hers, so she gave it back to me. I had both shoes, took the shoe, and I wrote a message. I lost this shoe on the 4th of July walking to your house. That night I knew. Very, oh. very serious. I even put a period. On the side, it says July 4th, I wanted you to be my girlfriend, 2019. I don't think Ayla even knows about this. On the sole of the shoe, it says, I'm crazy about you. So this is, uh, this is a very special shoe to me. How much would you sell that to me for? Whatever you got in your pocket. <sighs> I'm just overall so happy that it turned out the way it did because I cannot imagine myself with anyone else. I'm so happy he came to my house. All right, so how do you guys think that went? You guys think you had the same answers? No. No? I think you answered better details. I feel like I talked a lot. Did I talk a lot? You guys both did. Okay. Kian did cry though, so he loves mm -hmm. you more. I agree with that, yeah. No, I love you just as much. I just, gosh, and I'm pregnant and I didn't cry. I really do love him a lot. I just got all the tears out last night, he knows. Mm. <laughs> and now that you guys are together, so why don't you guys tell us how you guys decided to have a baby? <laughs> like the details? I think you should say that for another time. Yeah. Can you come in for a sec? Don't panic, but...